Hi, I'm Autumn, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a slightly different video than usual, and I'm really excited. So today's video is going to have three different parts to it. The first part is an unboxing. So I have a new book that I'm excited to show you guys and excited to dive into. The next part of this video is going to be a reading vlog. So I'm going to take you along with me as I read this book and share some of my thoughts on it as I'm reading. And then the last part will be a full spoiler review where I will share all my thoughts on the book once I finish with it. And so let's dive in to the unboxing. So here we have the package. Let's take a second to appreciate how beautiful this packaging is. Maybe I can do it without the scissors. Yay! Here it is. Isn't it beautiful? I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. The Nature of a Lady by Rosanna M. White is the first book in the Secrets of the Isles trilogy. It's a historical fiction mystery romance. Lady Elizabeth Libby Sinclair, with her love of microscopes and nature, isn't favored in society. She flees to the beautiful Isles of Scilly for the summer and stumbles onto the dangerous secrets left behind by her Holiday Cottage's former occupant, also named Elizabeth who mysteriously vanished. Oliver Tremaine, gentleman and clergyman, is determined to discover what happened to his sister with the help of the girl now living in what should have been Beth's summer cottage, especially when he realizes it's the curious young lady he met briefly two years ago who shares his love of botany and biology. But the hunt for his sister involves far more than nature walks, and he can't quite believe all the secrets Beth has been keeping from him. As Libby and Oliver work together, they discover ancient legends, pirate wrecks, betrayal, and the most mysterious phenomenon of all, love. so I'm about a third of the way through. Um, so far, this is shaping up to be probably my favorite of her books. Um, I'm loving the characters, loving the setting. Um, I will say that it took me a little bit longer to get into the character of Libby. I liked Oliver right at the, off the bat, and I liked Lavena right off the bat, but Libby, it took me a little bit longer to like, but I do really like her now. Um, and I really like, um, it kind of plays on like the different character point of views and how they're used kind of plays with the expectations that some of her readers might have from some of her previous books, um, especially with the Ladies in the Manor series. Um, 
and the way it works within having characters of different classes and how connected the characters are, the different point of views. Um, because in some of the previous series that she's done with the Codebreakers and with Shadows Over England, um, usually there was the two main point of views that were the love interests and then the third point of view was usually someone who was farther away in either distance or someone who was working at sort of cross purposes with uh, the two main characters. And with this, she hasn't done that with um, Mabena as the third point of view. It's someone who was working with them in their purposes um, and who is um, obviously staying with Libby because she's her maid and so she's close to them, connected to them, and we're seeing a lot of the same situations from her point of view, a lot of the same characters from her point of view. There's a lot more connection to her with her growing up on the island with Oliver, and so they're both connected. They have a lot of the same roots together. Um, there still is like the separation of class, but it's different than what has been done in the past with Rosamund and White's books. And I'm really liking that because it's um, giving so much more background and perspective on everything that's going on. Um, so you get to see a character interact with one character and then interact with another and you get to learn so much more about them. It's really interesting. Um, so moving on from that, some of the other characters that we've met that are clearly significant in some ways. Um, the character of Kasek, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, definitely being painted as an, not quite a villain, definitely an antagonist, especially because he is Oliver's rival, but also like there's been um, so far, at least one event that has painted him in somewhat suspicious light, like he's somehow involved in what's going on in some way, or at least you're supposed to think that he is. Um, I don't know if it's a red herring not, or not, if it's like because he's Oliver's rival, you're supposed to think that he's in on it, or if he actually is. And. And with Beth, it's interesting because you feel like you know her because all, so many of the other characters know her. And so you feel like you understand what's going on, like why she's doing what she's doing in a way, even though she has not even appeared on the page yet. And even though none of the characters know what she's doing or where she is or what's going on like there is this like weird like you do kind of feel like you know her <laughs> um which is really cool um and because you're worried about her because the other characters are worried about her and you feel like you know her too and um so that makes you even more invested in what's going on but things are starting to get to the point where I, they're starting to piece things together, I feel like. Um, and so the last thing I want to touch on for right now is the character um, of Oliver's grandmother. Because I feel like she's a very different character than what Rosanna M. White usually does in her books. because. She's leaning into something that is more supernatural than she usually does with, with her books, at least in the ones that I have read, with her character seeming to have some form of gift of prophecy or something like that, because she clearly seeing or knowing things before they happen, um, with her knowing that Beth wasn't at the cottage before anyone else did, but also with her interactions so far with Libby and calling Libby Oliver's wife 
um, even though as the readers it's a romance, you know they're going to end up together, but at this point the characters haven't even begun to consider romantic feelings for each other, so her making that connection and the things she says to Libby in the Abbey Gardens and the things she said to Oliver before that, there's clearly knowledge that she has. She couldn't have come by that by someone telling her that because the characters themselves don't even know some of these things yet. I'm interested to see like what she does with it going forward in the story, how she's going to explain it, if she's going to explain it. I'm not exactly sure where it's going. It's interesting and it's definitely not something I was expecting. So loving it so far overall and really intrigued and really excited to find out more. Alright, so I have read a little further. I'm now on page 172. I'm going back on my theory that Kasich is involved. I don't don't think he is anymore. Um, but we have had another instant of someone going out on the water when their characters seem to think that that's unusual for them to be going out. So either something is going to happen to someone while they're out on the water or someone's up to something. I'm not sure which yet. So I have a few things on my to-do list today, um, some things for work and some other errands to run, and then I'll be back to reading. into my review, I do want to say that some of the things I will be discussing are events from the end of the book. They're somewhat spoily in nature. As I said towards the beginning of this video, this book is the first in a trilogy. Um, one of the things that Rosanna M. White does with her trilogies is the mystery aspect of it will span all three books and then each individual book will follow the romance of two different characters. So The Nature of a Lady follows the romance of Oliver and Libby with a third point of view of Libby's maid Mabena. The setting takes place in 1906 on the Isles of Scilly, which are some somewhat tropical type of islands off the coast of Cornwall in England. One of the things I really like about this novel is the way that the setting really comes to life and adds to the story. Um, both the setting as the Isles of Scilly and the way the nature on the island and the community of the people living on the island really adds to both the relationships of the point of view characters and in the mystery and the island's connection to pirate history. So serving both as a backdrop to the story and as a driving point to it. I also really liked the historical side of things and the way that Rosanna M. White is able to, in her novels, put you in a historical setting and help you to understand the positions of the characters and the motivations in their place in history with the different societal expectations and the difference with classes while never making it seem like it's an essay on Edwardian life in the Sillies. It flows very naturally in the story, comes out in the way the characters interact and what they say and what they do, and I really appreciate that about her writing. I also loved the way that Oliver's hobby as an amateur botanist and Libby's hobby as an amateur naturalist helped bring out the setting of the Isles um, with the more tropical nature that they have and the way that the, uh, brought the two of them together. I loved the mystery aspect of this. I liked its ties to the pirate history of the islands. I liked how it was intense and it 
had high stakes and you could definitely feel the stakes and it kept you turning the page and trying to figure out what was going on and I felt like I was analyzing it more deeply as I was preparing to give a review and was discussing my thoughts on it as I was reading it um, and it really held up to the extra analyzing that I was doing even with the high stakes driving it forward it still was able to be a sort of feel-good cozy mystery. I do have a couple of critiques for the book. Most of these are things that come in towards the end of the novel. About two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through you're introduced to some characters who have been discussed earlier in the book but then begin to actually appear on the page. So you have the characters of Bram, who is Libby's brother, and Sheridan, who is a friend of his, who he is trying to arrange a marriage between them. Libby has gone to the islands for the summer to escape the unofficial engagement to Sheridan. And so from the beginning, you're sort of led to dislike both of these characters. And so I expected um, that to continue once they appeared on the page, but after the, sort of their initial introduction, you really don't dislike them and you actually sort of root for them in their own way. And so that sort of threw me. And so that ended up actually highlighting a sort of weakness in the romance between Libby and Oliver. The entire book takes place over the course of about a month. And while Libby and Oliver had met previous to the events of the novel, it sort of highlighted how short this relationship had gone on. And because I was expecting to dislike Sheridan more um, and dislike him for Libby, um, because that was sort of, you were told that at the beginning of the novel and then when they actually appear on the page, you're not exactly shown that. And so I kind of wanted that to be more fully explored as to why he was not good for Libby, but Oliver was. Um, but there wasn't really the time on the page to go into that. So that was something that I was not expecting to want to have um, and was not expecting to be disappointed by not seeing that. Um, along with that, there are also the characters of Beth and Emily who are either mentioned or appear briefly before the end of the novel, who then come in and become major players in the story. And so you end up with a ton of characters working together all in the climax, and you end up having to learn more about these characters and see them on the page and see their dynamic, which sort of throws the character dynamics and the pacing of the ending because now you have a lot more characters to work with. A lot of this is setting up some of these characters probably to be point of view characters and the main love interests for books two and three in the trilogy. So I understand why these characters were seen as important to the story, but because they weren't there for the entire novel, um, having them all come in the end felt like a little too much for the ending. And then my last critique is with the character of Mam Wynn, Oliver's grandmother, who as I said before is a different type of character than I've seen in Rosanna M. Lloyd's books previously um, with her more supernatural ability. And it is something that I think I could would have liked it more if it had remained something small more in the background. At the beginning, it sort of came out in little ways, um, helping to drive the plot forward and helping to drive the relationships of the characters. Um, but towards the end, certain major plot points ended up hinging on this. And so it ended up feeling a little bit like a plot convenience and so made some of the things, especially the climax, feel a little bit contrived because she's able to arrive with help exactly when they need help because she knew they would need help through this ab 
ability to sort of see the future and it felt a little out of place for the story as a whole. So those are my thoughts on The Nature of a Lady. Overall, I really enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the series. I highly recommend this as well as other books by her. So if you're interested in this book or other books by Rosanna M. White, I will link her website down below.